What's going on guys? Thanks for joining me here again today. I am Josh and I make motorcycle related content. And today we are here at ESC Power Sports with my good mechanic Chandler. And we're gonna go over why it is important to have a local mechanic. So I'm here at ESC Power Sports today with the owner operator Chandler. Cool. If you haven't checked him out on Instagram, go ahead and check him out right here. He is super active and can basically explain and give you any sort of advice that you need on motorcycles, four wheelers, on road, off road, any questions that you might have. He is my definite go to local mechanic. <laughs> so Chandler, give me a tour of your shop and let me know what you're doing. Right on. What's going on everybody? Uh, I'm Chandler, obviously. Uh, this is our small but humble operation, obviously. I uh, appreciate you taking the time, Josh, to you know, give me the spotlight for a minute and show everybody what's going on here. But uh, we do everything, obviously, from dirt bikes, four-wheelers, motorcycles, um, side-by-sides, pretty much anything dirt-related or street-related, we try to mess with it when we can. Um, obviously. It's small, but at the same time, I'll give you a walk around, I guess, Josh, and go follow me around. But yeah, obviously, this is my basic workstation uh, where we do all of our engine rebuilds, all of our uh, small stuff, carb cleaning. Uh, of course, we have a carb dunk tank on the opposite side of the shop for, you know, really cleaning up those nasty and gunked up situations. Um, but yeah, obviously, tools over here, my TV. <laughs> spend most of my time watching that, naturally. <laughs> uh, obviously, bike storage. I keep bikes here and other parts, other crap. I really need to clean up. This is horribly, horribly disorganized, and I apologize. Um, obviously, shop press, carb dunk tank, uh, parts. These are all pretty much dirt bike and four-wheeler related parts. Um, yeah, but uh, this is the whole operation for the most part. We do stock Maxima oil. Um, I don't know if uh, anyone who's been riding dirt for any period of time will tell you, uh, or should be for that matter, pretty familiar with Maxima products. Uh, they've been a big staple in motocross and supercross for many generations now, many years now. Um, that's pretty much all I use. I've never had Maxima give me an issue. Um, and Maxima always stands behind their product too. So I've always been really satisfied and I'll continue to support them as long as they give me the opportunity. So, um, right on. Um, cut the factory OEM fender, obviously. Shave that down, rounded it. Same thing with the front too. Cut the top, cut the bottom. Shave the factory rear mounts that actually hold the fender and stabilize it. So it's only held in place by the four primary mounts that sit right on the uh, front forks. Obviously the fork rebuild on it. I used the 4 into one uh, headlight conversion kit and actually converted it over to a standard halogen style um, because before it was like the old Jeeps where it had the, the what is it called, um, uh, God knows, sealed in housing design. You actually had to replace the entire bulb. Right. You couldn't replace just the, the actual hal halogen bulb. You had to replace the whole headlight assembly. So now it's converted over so you can just replace bulbs. I threw a crappy annoying LED in it. Um, did a 4 into one uh, custom singular um, speedometer on there uh, along with all the little the neutral light and uh, oil light, all that crap. Um, what else do we do on this? Obviously put CL pipes on it, scrambler pipes, because this was originally a CB360. Also used a CJ360 tank, um, so it's kind of a conglomeration of a bunch of different bikes. Um, took a $40 eBay seat, <laughs> pulled the cover off of it, cut all the foam out, uh, redid all that. 
put the little Harley bag on it. And that's actually a Bung King full LED tail light for a, for a Harley. That thing is blindingly and stupidly bright. <laughs> um, God, what else is there that we've done to this bike? Obviously, it's got a set of Pro Tapers, uh, dirt bike handlebars on it. Um, and then it's actually got, yeah, it's running a uh, Suzuki LTR450 brake master cylinder um, because the OEM ones are crap. So I just went ahead and worked that one on there and it works great. Um, aside from that, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, we repainted it, painted the tank, uh, custom decals, obviously. I don't think that's about it. But yeah, I love this bike, man. The engine was running nice and strong when you got it? Amazingly, yeah. Um, we got this bike in, in Tupperware boxes, actually. Um, got it in pieces. And it's a long story, but nonetheless, this bike actually uh, belonged to a friend of my dad's back in the 70s. And after going through like seven different hands, we managed to connect the dots and figure that out. Very nice. Um, so now it's one of those bikes that won't ever go anywhere. Um, but yeah, it was, it was the motor actually had good compression when we got it. Uh, obviously, it was on, I think it was on frame when I got it, and then the carbs were off of it. We rebuilt the carbs, put those back on there, put new throttle cables in it, new clutch cable. Adjusting the clutch on these is really weird too, because it has like a little clutch wheel design with three balls, and depending on how it rotates, the ball moves in a groove that applies tension to the cylinder it's sitting on, and that's what actually pushes and actuates the clutch assembly. So it's really weird. The old design is really cool, but. Um, Redid all that, put that back together, resealed everything, and yeah, she's been great. Fires up pretty much every time. I need to, you know, run some stable through it every now and then, and kind of reclean the carbs and at least spray them off. But um, by far one of my favorite, if not most underpowered motorcycle. <laughs> great and, machine. And this is your 1974 Honda. Yep, 74 Honda CB360. Technically, it's a CB360, but it's more of a scrambler design now, so I'd say it's more closely aligned with the CL360, uh, although it uses parts off of all three. Um, I made these little exhaust brackets and such and notched them out. Oh yeah, I put new rear suspension on it too. I can't, it's an Olin's knockoff, but it's not an Olin's. It's one of the four to, four into one uh, dual rate rear shocks. Um, but I bought those and put those on there too because the factory ones were just junk. And I've already bent one wheel on this bike. It's actually got another front wheel on it because I bent the front wheel hitting a pothole um, back when I first got it. The front turn signals on it are four into one. Customs, I'm pretty sure. I had rears for it too, but I took them off for some reason. I don't remember what it was. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Reliable little bike. So, um, yeah, this is a small paint booth right now. I'm sorry, it's really cluttered. Um, same time, I've got a couple of projects that we're working on in here. Obviously, my personal bikes are back there. That's my LTR 450 and my CB1000R. Um, this is my tire machine. Uh, big thanks to Dustin, obviously, for hooking up the shop with that. We use that pretty religiously. It's great for four-wheeler tires, not so great for anything other. <laughs> but it uh, works wonderfully. Of course, you got a full beat, beat blasting setup, sand blasting setup. Um, use this all the time, obviously, as well. They're pretty invaluable. Anybody who's used one or had to rust bust any, rust bust any amount of metal will tell you these are just absolutely worth their weight in gold. Um, yeah, obviously, we have a variety. We have a lot of in-stock paints, actually. This is a pretty rare brand of metal flake paint from the 80s and 90s, which are really almost impossible to find now. Um, it's not pretty much every color and variation of it, with the exception of royal blue and I think another red variation. Um, but yeah, we're really fortunate to have that in stock as well. Um, yeah, big thanks to Harvey for hooking up the shop with that one. But yeah, that's pretty much it. No, tires, yeah, got a whole bunch of tires in stock as well. <laughs> All right. So yeah. now that we've taken a pretty good tour of your place and you showed us all around, um, where would it be more beneficial to have a local mechanic versus going to the dealer? I think proximity would probably play a pretty good, pretty good role in that. Um, it, it, uh, having somebody nearby that you can you can uh, call and contact to get in touch with about basic things is always very beneficial. Um, usually with dealers and. Larger uh, repair facilities, they're very by the book, which of course is very good in a lot of aspects. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's nice to have a personable uh, or a personal connection with whoever's repairing your machines. Uh, I have people who will call me on the trail and say, hey, I have this little issue going on. How would I rectify this or correct it quickly? And sometimes I'm capable of providing that input that gets them where they need to go. And whereas with a dealer, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have the ability to make that sort of contact. Right, you won't know who's working on your bike. Exactly, and then not only that, but a dealer would want, okay, we'll bring it by, we'll do a $125 diagnostic, and we'll go from there and provide some sort of information. Sometimes being as small as I am is beneficial in that I can help people out without having to actually provide any sort of service whatsoever. I can just give them input or advice 
and that gets them where they need to go. Absolutely. And, you know, at the end of the day, we want everybody happy and everybody riding, and that's honestly right. what's most important. So I've called you at 8 o'clock at night on a Thursday, and yep. that's not something that I get from a dealership or even an independent repair Very shop. Very true. Very true. Now, on the flip side, if I were to have something that would be more beneficial to the dealer versus an independent mechanic such as yourself, what kind of scenarios would those be? Um, the only ones I can really think of offhand that I would uh, immediately not condone would be, of course, like factory reflashes, um, things that if you have an update that needs to be done, um, say the factory ECM needs to be reprogrammed, recalibrated for whatever reason, obviously they're going to have the software necessary to do that quickly and efficiently. Um, I, on the other hand, don't without providing some sort of piggyback solution or a retuning software, whether it be Power Commander or uh, Vortex ECU, um, whatever the case may be. That's really as far as I'm capable of going just because I don't have the factory connections that any dealer would have already established. Understandable. Yep. And as far as new bikes are concerned, if they're within the first year or two of their factory warranty, warranty. that's a certain situation where it would be better off. Absolutely. To save the customer money yep. and at the same time have it be covered. Why not get that done for free? Absolutely. <laughs> it <laughs> makes sense. Right. Yep, I agree. So you've given us a pretty good tour of the shop, showed us the lift, showed us some of the vehicles that you're working on, some of the services that you provide, whether it be paint work, tires, engine rebuilds, carb rebuilds. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a whole lot that you can't cover here at the shop. It's very true. Um, very blessed. Uh, we, you know, we have a pretty unique ability in that I can do a lot of stuff in-house. Um, I even do some, obviously, performance building engine uh, or head work for that matter. I've done um, overbores, uh, big bore kits, things of that sort. Um, so we're pretty capable, which is pretty awesome. Um, but, uh, you know, it, uh, there's always room to grow. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so yep. I'm obviously looking to hopefully expand my shop in the next couple of years and hopefully, you know, be able to provide a little bit more room so I can obviously store more machines and hopefully get more stuff done. Right on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, everyone, thanks for joining me here again today. Chandler at ESC Power Sports. Be sure to hit him up on Instagram or Facebook. I'll leave links down below to that, as well as right here. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to be safe, be a good apple, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Later. So Chandler. Can't get his wood stove started. <laughs> can't get his wood stove started. And... We're going to go over why it's important to have a local mechanic. Yeah, there you Yeah, that makes sense. And provide general maintenance to your motorcycle, whether it's via mechanic or by your own hand. Bingo. No, we're going to skip that. <laughs> we got we to gotta keep it on one topic. We start, then you got a 45 minute <laughs> exactly. So.